Welcome to The Friday Habit with Benjamin Manley and Mark Labriola II. The Friday Habit is for creators, entrepreneurs, and agency owners looking for actionable ideas on how to grow their business and be more profitable. We'll pull from our combined knowledge of over 20 years and interview thought leaders that will inspire you and give you the motivation you need to kick your business into high gear. Buckle up. It's Friday. Mark, would you rather have way more work than you can accomplish in a day and have the potential to be stressed out? Or would you rather have hardly any work at all and be super bored? Oh, uh, this is a great question, Ben. Uh, I think I would rather be potentially stressed out. <laughs> that would be better than wrong? being bored? No, <laughs> yeah, there's no I wrong mean, answer. I, I feel like uh, sometimes I feel energized when I, I have so much stuff to do and I have so many things to get done and I'm like, you know, knocking things down. I, I feel like I'm winning constantly. So I think I'd rather have more stuff than not. Love it. Well, hey, uh, if you guys are enjoying the podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review in the Apple Podcast app. It really helps us uh, reach more people and go our community. Yeah, totally. And you know what? Hey, today I'm excited to introduce our guest to you. Uh, we have Jeremy Ryan Slate on the podcast. He's the founder of Create Your Own Life Podcast, a show to help people create life on their own terms at a world-class level. He studied literature at Oxford University, is a former champion power lifter turned new media entrepreneur. Uh, so I think we're going to have a fantastic conversation with Jeremy, and I'm glad that he's on the Friday Habit. Jeremy, welcome to the show. Hey, man. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I, I actually was super excited about your opening question there, by the way. Um, I'm, I'm working <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a naturopath right now because I have uh, like uh, an issue with uh, my adrenal glands being like totally shot from all the coffee and pre-workouts I've done over the years. And we were talking yesterday and he's like, I was explaining like what my daily schedule looks like. He's like, so do you have vacations? I'm like, yeah, but this is what they sound like. And I'm like, we go from here, go to there, go to here, go to here. And he's like, wow, you really are. Uh, we we got to do something about this, man. You got to chill out a little bit. So I think it goes with what you were saying. Like I go, 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 man. So I'm, I'm kind of with you on what you just said before. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't want to be bored. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Well, hey, you know, I, I'm I'm so glad that that your team reached out to us and and uh, that we we're able to get you on the Friday habit. You have uh, obviously accomplished a ton of things, and from where I'm sitting, you look like you're 15 years old. So, oh I'm yeah, like, how, <laughs> how have you accomplished so much in such a short period of time? And so, please, if you would just, dude, kinda, until I was it, 25, <laughs> I got carded for everything. But anyway, continue. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I got that baby face too. I'm gonna be 40 this next year, and people. Are are like, hey, I thought yeah. you were only uh, 32. I'm like, thank you. I'll, I'll be I'll be 34 next year, but like, okay, you got that. You got those young genes, which is great. Well, hey, tell us a little bit about you know who you are, you know how you got to where you are, and a little bit of your journey. I, I know it's a pretty pretty interesting story, so I, I'd love just to kind of start there and for us just to get to know you a little bit better. Absolutely. So interestingly enough, um, like my goal in life was always to be a college professor. So I uh, have uh, an undergrad degree in uh, Catholic theology and then also Torah. So I was a double major. I'm, you know, which is super interesting to me. Uh, I then studied at New College Oxford in literature. And I then got my master's in early Roman Empire propaganda, not a very applicable skill in the world of getting a job. <laughs> but I, I wrote this whole like, dissertation on how the Roman emperor convinced people it was God and the tools that he used to do it. it was, it's quite interesting stuff. But yeah. like that wasn't like they weren't like lining up to hire people for that. So that's kind of, you know, what I did coming out of school. And in 2011, it was a super bad economy for, for trying to get a job. So I came out and I didn't have a, a PhD, which my goal was to teach in college. I just had the master's. So I was overqualified for all the basic and entry level jobs and underqualified for like actually getting the job I wanted. So I ended up working at a gym at night and during the day I was, uh, you know, uh, painting houses, but I was doing it in, like the old school way where you do everything by hand on a wooden 40 foot ladder and you think you're going to die. So, so like <laughs> yeah. I was doing that for 17 or 18 hours a day and like just, I was just burnt out, man. And mm. I actually ended up running into a friend of my family and they're like, Hey, you know, the private school that I, that I work at, we're looking for teachers. You don't really need a degree or anything like that. So we'd love to have you, you know, come and apply. I ended up getting that job and I got burnt out super quickly because, you know, you mentioned you're 40. So uh, you're almost 40. You know, I'm in my mid thirties. And uh, when I was in school, man, if people had flip phones, it was a big deal. Now everybody yeah. has these smartphones. And the goal of these kids days is how far can I push this guy, get him angry and record him. 
So like that was every mm. single day of my life, uh, you know, working. And I just wasn't happy. And part of it was I wasn't prepared for running kids in a classroom. I was the ultimate student and I tried to be a teacher and didn't really work out. In 2012, my mom ended up having a really bad stroke and it really kind of set me on a little bit of a spiral. Like I was like, you know, why am I doing what I'm doing? I'm miserable every day. Like, where am I going to go with this? Mm -hmm. And it took me about a year to decide where, what I was going to do. My wife was presented with this network marketing opportunity, which I didn't know what that was. So like, I saw this, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be like, a millionaire next week. <laughs> like I just got to find two people. Okay. Who can I dupe into this? Oh, so no. that was kind of the, kind of the, the first thing I jumped into. And, uh, you know, I got really, really good at creating high levels of credit card debt. I was, I was extremely good at it. And, you know, I did that for about two years, just kind of like trying to make things go right. And it just, it, it really didn't. And, uh, you know, from there I went to selling life insurance, which I was darn good at. I just hated telling people, so you're going to die. You should probably buy this. It's a good idea. <laughs> and I actually got chased out of an 80 year old man's house as, as fast as an 80 year old man can run. Um, because I didn't realize that his wife had passed away and like, I just didn't like study the notes and stuff on it. Mm. So I, you still have an obligation to like visit somebody at that age, but you can't sell them any more insurance. So I just st stopped in to see how he's doing. I'm like, how's it going? And he kind of went off on me. Like you're young and you have your life ahead of you. And how could you understand? And, like my wife just died. I'm like, I'm so sorry. So that was my l last day selling life insurance. And uh, from there, I actually ended up selling products on Amazon, but left the get my product for a dollar promo code on there and lost all 200 of my products in about 20 minutes to the same address in Maryland. So somebody kind of scoped me out, got smart, bought everything at a discount and was oh, like, man. way to go, buddy. So that was the end of my business career. So it was just like bad break after oh, bad dude, break totally. after bad break. It, it was bad, man. Like, I feel like it was like a, an episode of Benny Hill, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that was like kind of like what it was like. So I was reading blogs and watching YouTube videos and I taught myself how to build websites from that. So I actually ended up working at a friend's marketing firm and, you know, I was doing OK. I was paying the bills. It was fine. And I had listened to podcasts since like 2007. So I was like, you know, what? I'm going to give that a shot. So I started a show called Rock Your Life. Horrible. Absolutely hmm. horrible. Um, I thought it was like this life coach and, and things like that. And that couldn't be further from the truth. I totally lack empathy. So it just did not go well. <laughs> I quit in about 60 days. Um, and then it took a little bit, but I started my current show, which is Create Your Own Life. And we saw 10,000 listens in our first 30 days. Uh, I've wow. talked to a lot of people I admired and it led to me starting the agency. We currently have command your brand with my wife. So like, you know, it's definitely been a lot of failures, which I've learned a lot from, um, you know, before what I'm doing now, man. Wow. That's, that sounds like amazing. So during that time, what kept yeah. you going? Like what, what was the motivation or, you know, that carrot on the stick that like allowed you to push through and continue to like not give up? So initially, it was the wrong reasoning. Um, when I had started my network marketing business, I alienated a lot of my friends um, because I was that guy like, buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing. I was that guy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them were avoiding me. And at the, I got to that point in time where it was like, if I quit, then those guys are going to be right. And they can't be right. Like, you know, I, I would be doing this. So like initially, it was a really bad motivation. It was just to not be wrong. Yeah. Which you're really hurting yourself when you continue doing something just to not be wrong. So it took me a while to kind of learn that. So that was initially, but then eventually I realized like I kind of had reached the point where nobody was really going to hire me anymore. Like, like who would hire me for a job other than a friend that needed some help at their, at their web firm? Because yeah. I, you get to a certain point where you kind of get more entrepreneurial, thinking a certain way, acting a certain way, doing things a certain way. You don't really Unhirable. do very well working for somebody. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. I was, nobody was going to hire me and I wasn't going to make the amount of money I wanted to make doing that. So I had to kind of really find another way. So that was kind of the, the guiding light. But it was just kind of figuring out, like, eventually you get really knocked down and you're like, how do I do this? So, you know, I just went back to what I was good at and that was being a student. And that's why the podcast worked out. I wasn't the teacher anymore. I was the student. That's awesome. Man, what an inspiring story. You know, I think it's one of those things that a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, we get that that fire within our belly and we start uh, just pursuing something. You know, a lot of times... Uh, you know, we don't have certain skills, but we teach ourselves what we need in order to, you know, achieve success. And so it's kind of cool yeah. to hear that you, you know, just kept, kept pushing forward, learning new skills, teaching yourself how to design websites. And, uh, eventually, you know, things kind of, uh, you know, worked out for you. Like you didn't give up, you know, which is great. Yeah. Well, I, I think the thing that's really important about that 
man is like you know, I, I, we talked about a lot of failures there, but I learned a skill from each and every one of those. Like mm. I, I learned how to make phone calls more than anybody else. I learned how to show up more than anybody else. So I think at the same time, you have to look at what can I learn from every opportunity I'm given? Like it's super important. Yeah, no, that's so true. It's like trying to, you know, stay optimistic and see how the glass is half full instead of half empty with, you know, whatever you're pursuing. So let's move a little bit into PR you know, it seems like you have a lot of um, uh, experience in the realm of PR. If you took a podcast from zero to 10,000 downloads in a very short period of time, um, that yeah. must have been due to some skills of, uh, you know, marketing and public relations. So real quick, you know, a lot of our listeners, you know, they may be new entrepreneurs, they may be, you know, new to marketing. Could you maybe explain a little bit you know, what PR is and then why it's important. So PR, I like to give people the easy, the easy example. It's making good works known. Like you're, you're taking what you do and you're telling people about it. And people don't quite understand that PR and marketing, like they're complementary, but they aren't the same thing, right? Like I, I, I tend to run into people that think every single thing they do is a marketing action. And they're looking at, you know, what leads am I going to get from this action? What, what am I going to get from this action? But at the same time, PR is making good works known, but it's also the pieces you're creating so you can market them. You know, it may be um, a media feature. It may be uh, something that you're doing in the community. So you have to think of PR and marketing are two things that work together. And PR or public relations is making good worth known. It's your relationship with the public. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And and it, I, I love the way you just explained that because, um, you know, sometimes we, we think to ourselves like, oh, well, I don't have video creating skills or I don't have um, podcast creating skills. But really, no matter where you are, you can take something that you have and promote that, whether that's on Facebook, you know, within your your network or on LinkedIn. Um, you know, I find for myself, every time I create some sort of video that's a, an educational piece or, or some some, some type of content that goes out just to be a value that my phone starts ringing, my email start mm -hmm. blowing up. And all it was, was me just, you know, trying to provide value to, to my marketplace, not really trying to get anything from them. You know, the, can you give us maybe like three tips or four tips or five tips on, you know, um, the basics of PR that, that pretty much anybody could put to action right away? Yeah. And I, and I want to go back to like one of the things you were saying before about like, you know, we, we talked about getting known, we talked about getting out there, but um, it's also knowing what's newsworthy or what's interesting. You know what I mean? I think a lot of businesses think like, hey, people should just cover me because I exist. And that's just like, that's not true at all. Like, why would people find what you're doing interesting? What's interesting and unique about it? So that's kind of the first thing you really want to look at when you're deciding what am I going to do in terms of getting out there? So here's a great example of that. Um, in the podcast world, 50,000 downloads isn't that big of a deal. But when I had my first 50,000 to a newspaper, they're like, whoa, that's a lot of downloads. So we wrote a press release about that. We got that published in a lot of local press. And that was kind of the first piece that we could do. So you really want to figure out what's newsworthy or interesting about what you're doing. And that's what's really important in the PR world is figuring out what's newsworthy and what's interesting. So it could be a statistic. It could be some sort of special community outreach you're doing. Like maybe you're doing something with schools. Um, I did a fundraiser a bunch of years ago for the Wounded Warrior Project where I pulled a 80,000 pound army tank in the back of an 18 wheeler. Um, we wrote a press release about that. So like those are things that are what is newsworthy about what I'm doing. And it doesn't always have to apply to your business, but it has to be newsworthy and interesting. So that's kind of the first thing I would say. Um, the second thing is what I like to call the small pond strategy. And a lot of people are like, oh, I want to get on TV. I want to get Forbes. I want to get Inc. And it's like, that's great. And you can totally work up to those things. But what I like to tell people is you need to figure out what small pond you're a part of. And by that, I mean, I grew up in a small town, five eighths of a mile in size. Nothing happens there. Literally nothing. We don't even have a, a school of any sort, like a grocery store, nothing. So like, you know, little girl cries is a news story. Like nothing really, really happens in that town. So what you want to do is find out what are the small ponds you're a part of. It could be your university. It could be, you know, a small town like myself. It could be, I also live in a lake community. That's a small pond um, in addition to being a lake. Um, so you want to figure out what are those things. And I always tell people to make a list of those and kind of list those out. And those are the news sources that you're going to work with initially. Because here's the really cool thing, especially in, in these small communities, is Everybody that is a news source now is pretty much in Google News. So when you get something in a physical newspaper, you have a really good chance of also getting it online too. 
So you're kind of starting to build up press pieces. And also Mm. uh, when it hits Google News, that hits a lot of people in the media that are looking for news. So you're kind of helping yourself in that way. So what I like to tell people is when you find those local media sources, that's where you're going to talk about what's newsworthy with a lot of press releases. And I, I like people to understand that the press release itself can be a piece, which is cool, like you get something published, but it's actually the tool that gets you something else. And, and that means like uh, the, one of the first press releases I was in, it was picked up by a paper here in New Jersey called the Bergen Record. And it's like a larger regional paper. So the uh, producer for a television station was reading that news article. And that was how I got on TV the first time because like, oh, podcasting, that's really interesting. So it can mm. be a piece in itself if you get a featured article or, or a press release in the paper, but it can also lead to other things. So I, I always think people think it's the end product. It's not. And then the, the third tip I would say around that is the, a lot of PR is also what you do with it. Because I think people think that, that that piece, like we talked about earlier, is the final product. But there's being effect of PR, which is just thinking, hey, I get a, an article out there. Let's wait for some leads and see what happens. But there's being effective with it. So what are you going to do with it? How are you going to use it in your own marketing? Add, adding logos to your website. Um, if you're doing you know, online marketing, adding those different pieces to your funnel so that people convert better. So it's really a thing that can help you create trust and create a lot, a lot of higher level action if you're using it the right way. So basically like letting your audience know about whatever PR that's out there, not yeah. just like sitting on it, but you need to actually push it out to people so they can hear it. This is this is super interesting to me because my my narrow-minded perception of PR is like, okay, a newspaper article. And I'm like, okay, I'm a, you know, I'm a small business, you know, five employees. We do websites for people all over the country, but it's like getting into a local newspaper. Like, is that really going to help me? But this is fascinating because you're saying it's not just about the newspaper, but it gets picked up online, gets pushed further and actually helps you in that way. Mm -hmm. So since I've never done that before, what are some actual practical steps to do that? Like, what does that actually look like? Do I go, you know, if you're going to say, Hey, go to this website and submit it. Like, what are some of the like nitty gritty things you can do to actually get started? So that's a really great question. The first thing I would say is you have to learn how to write a grid press release. Okay. Um, so I would tell your listeners to Google, um, there's an article by HubSpot called How to Write a Press Release in 2020. I wouldn't Google anything else about 2020 because the internet may scare you about what's going on this year. <laughs> um, but How to Write a Press Release in 2020, it's a really great article by HubSpot. And it kind of goes through a lot of the different things you have to do because there's a very particular way you write a press release. And like what I explain to people now isn't going to help them as much as that article was. So that would be the first thing is learn how to write a great press mm. release. Okay. The second thing I would say is make a spreadsheet of a lot of those small pond places you're going to reach out to. Um, it could be your university. It could be uh, the town you're in. It could be for me, it's a lake community. So that's kind of the second thing you want to do. After that, you need to learn the terminology of like how do you actually do this. So when you go to a company's website, and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, right? That's where all the goodies are. All the good links are at the bottom because, you know, webmasters don't put them at the top because they don't want you to annoy them. So, like, at the bottoms where you're going to find, like, <laughs> the, con- the right type of contact us, the right type of, of links and stuff. So there's a few things you're going to look for. Um, the easy way is if you see submit a press release or submit a release. Um, most news sources won't do that. I know my local paper does that. But that's going to be the first thing you look for is either submit a release or a uh, press release. If you don't see that, the next thing you're going to look for is something called uh, the newsroom because newsroom is another way you're going to submit tips as well. So you could do that. Uh, If you don't find that, the next thing you're going to look for is news tips. So you kind of go through this hierarchy of what you can do. If it's easy as it says press release, great. Uh, So the next thing you do is is newsroom and then you go to tips. Now, if you can't find any of that, there's another another way you can kind of go about this. So I literally just Google, how do I submit a press release to? Like in whatever that news source is. That's a really good way to do it. If that doesn't work, um, another way you can do it is you go to uh, hunter.io and hunter.io is awesome because what they'll do is they'll tell you any existing emails at a website. And that was how I got actually a lot of my early podcast guests. I was able to like hack people's contact info. So then what you can actually do is put in that site and it'll tell you a lot of the existing emails and you can find out um, what's the right person to contact. But that's really the basics of it. Sometimes what you can also do as well is for larger papers and larger larger publications, they're going to have people that cover different topics. Like maybe they have a sports writer, or maybe they have somebody um, in online business, like if you're a web developer. So like you may want to look at that and even submit the press release to that particular person. And then that could actually get you a featured article. So there's kind of a whole way you're going to go about it and a methodology you're going to use, but that's kind of the basics of it. That's incredibly helpful. <laughs> 
<laughs> gold. You're just you're just spinning gold. Rumple Stiltskin over here, just like you know, dropping those bombs. Rumple Stiltskin, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, spinning did I, gold. Did, did I sleep for forty years? What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> or wait, who is the guy that's oh Rip Van Winkle slept for 40 years? Dude, I'm totally wrong on that. It was spinning gold, you know, like uh <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just feel like I got a condensed lesson of probably I don't know how many years you've been doing this down to like five minutes. So it's just that, the pure basics, man. Cause like I think yeah. a lot of people overcomplicate it. And if you understand the basics, you can get fancy and complicated from there, but there's a lot you can do with the basics, man. Okay. Well, and I think too that like, you know, in my mind, you know, always you always or at least for me, I always felt like PR seemed like such an antiquated thing like, oh, Prince dead. Like who's doing a press release, you know, like what what's the point of that? And does that even have any value? But that's why it's a great idea because people think it's dead, so your competition's a lot lower. <laughs> yeah, that makes that's, sense. I, mean, that makes I sense. love that. Well, yeah, and also, I mean, it reminds me of like even sending physical mail. It stands out to people now if you send them a card in the mail because they're not used to that anymore. So it's like, oh wow, that's crazy. A lot of dentists and and even agencies and stuff are killing it with direct mail right now because um, I know especially there's one company that that's doing it, uh, Postcard Mania, and what they do is they actually have a partnership with Google and they do postcards and then they also do Google retargeting, so that you get a postcard and then they hit you with an ad. So it's like it's what what was you know mm. old is new, and especially if you figure out how to use it in the new world. Love it. So I ha have a couple quick examples that I'm thinking of in my business that might yeah. be a good idea to do a press release about. I loved your feedback and say like, hey, are these good ideas or not? So for example, something I think makes our business unique is that we build websites in one day live with a client. So I feel like that might be kind of an interesting thing, newsworthy. You know, it's like, hey, mm -hmm. like that's that's somewhat unique. Uh, most agencies don't build a website in a day while you watch kind of thing. So it's like, hey, that might be kind of a th fun thing to put out there or things like, uh, we have, um, we usually do about a free website per month for a nonprofit in our community. And we don't even talk about mm -hmm. that on our website or really anywhere. So like maybe yeah. those are opportunities. Are those the types of things you're talking about or, or, or what would you suggest? No, definitely. And, and the, the, the first one might need a little bit more positioning, meaning like you, you need to kind of figure out how to fancy it up a little bit. And I'm, I'm yep. kind of thinking about that one. I'll, I'll get back to that one. Yeah, but the yeah. one that's really, really good is, is the one that you do for nonprofits. Um, so what I would talk, the, the way you want to open your press release is you talk a little bit about the nonprofit world. You talk about like some of their struggles, like, you know, maybe their funding's been cut this year because I know a lot of people have had their funding cut. And mm. then you talk a little bit about the program, why you guys are doing it. And then what you close it with um, is in a press release is you close it with what's called the boilerplate. And that is like uh, whatever your company is, is a blah, blah, blah agency that helps da, 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 people um, for any media inquiries, contact blank. So like that could be mm. a really good way to go about it. You kind of have to tell the story backwards, but you want to start with like why it's relevant. So it's relevant because yeah. nonprofits need help, even more help mm. this year than usual. And then, yeah. you know, kind of after that, um, how you're actually helping them. And you also want to have as well, you need to have supporting quotes in a press release too. So like, you know, you could quote yourself um, or you could uh, quote somebody that's talking about these struggles nonprofits are having. But I think that that right there, man, um, you need to get that release out like now because that would be a really, <laughs> really great. Uh, out of all of them you gave me, that's the best one. I would definitely like cool. get that release out there soon. Cool. That's yeah, really helpful. That, that totally makes sense. That's awesome. Well, listen, I, I know we're going to continue this conversation next week and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about, you know, you as an entrepreneur and, you know, how you, uh, you know, make it through each day and and, and be present with your family. Um, but Ben, what do you got for our recap? What, what are the, the main takeaways for, for today's episode? I've got some good ones. So uh, one thing you said, Jeremy, is that PR is making good works known, which really summarizes it well, I think. Uh, marketing and PR are, are complementary, but they're not the same thing. And you gave a couple of tips that we can follow. Uh, one is to ask yourself what's newsworthy or interesting about what you're doing. Uh, second, to follow a small pond strategy and basically identify what ponds you're a part of. Uh, and then after you do that, go ahead and um, learn how to write a great press release and strategically go to those different sites and look at the bottom for things like press release link, uh, or maybe a newsroom link or a news tips link. And basically you can even use things like hunter.io to kind of target and find specific people in the organization to submit it to. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I got out of it. Nice. And then Jeremy, we always like to leave everybody with a, um, action item for the week, you know, so mm -hmm. that we're always pushing ourselves to be better and grow as far as PR goes. What is one thing our listeners could put into action right away and, uh, you know, take into this next week? 
Well, I, th- I think, you know, we kind of gave them a lot of action steps today. So I think what they really should be doing um, is just like we talked about here, list the topics you could write a press release about. And we just kind of showed you how you can work it out and work it through. Um, but I would also say, like, list out what your small pond is in your first places to approach because you, you need to create a portfolio of press, which means a collection of press pieces so that you can get mm-hmm. out and get bigger, higher level press and get noticed more. So I, I think that's a lot of homework for them this week, man. And yeah. I'd, I'd love to I'd love to see them uh, get something done this week, man. Totally. Hey, where can people find you and, and, and uh, contact you and and get to know more about you? Absolutely. So we talked a lot about uh, PR and press and kind of getting the right attention. So if people are looking for help with that, I put together an awesome resource for your audience called The Seven Reasons You're Not Getting Booked on Your Favorite Podcasts. And it goes over a lot of the basic things about PR we talked about today. So you can get out there and get seen the right way. So that's over at commandyourbrand.com slash seven reasons. And the word seven or the number seven will work for that. Awesome. We'll link to that in the show notes too. Cool. Well, um, you guys go to the FridayHabit.com to find show notes for this episode. There you can also find links to our websites and ways to get in touch. At the bottom of the page, you can download our free guide to the Friday Habit System, and that will show you how to set aside one full day each week dedicated to working on your business instead of in your business. And if you enjoyed this episode, please head over to iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast and click that subscribe button. You get notified when uh, new downloads take place and helps us get the word out and reach more people. And until next time, live every day like it's Friday.